Hello, my name is Alistair McIntosh, Chief Executive of the Housing Quality Network. Welcome to this week's edition of First Things First, but I am hopelessly out of my depth. So why do I feel out of my depth? It's because the Regulator for Social Housing is doing a workshop on stress testing with us. They've asked what I want to talk about and as usual I have as much clue as anyone as to what's about to emerge from my mouth. But the real trick with stress testing isn't the mechanics. We're all pretty clear on the rules, we're all pretty clear on what the regulator wants to see, we understand the levers to pull in a crisis. What we're not at all good at is predicting the scenarios in front of us. Real life, this Covid situation, the lockdowns are beyond anything any of us predicted. Now it is true that Baldrick, and let me just get the book here, Baldrick, so Tony Robinson, in this publication, did predict a pandemic. It is also true that the government planned for a pandemic, you know, organised a huge training exercise across the entire United Kingdom, but unfortunately they planned for the wrong type of pandemic just as so often we plan for the wrong type of snow, rain or leaves in the line. And we do need to predict because when we predict, we gain room for manoeuvre. There's a great column in Cycling Weekly by a guy called Dr Hutch, a fantastic performance cyclist and lawyer. And he's got some very interesting things to say about prediction. Let me read it to you. The purpose of prediction is not to be right, but to be impressive. Above all, enjoy yourself. It's literally impossible to be wrong. The worst you can possibly be is unconvincing. And when Dr Hutch is asked to predict who will win a cycle race, he says you either go for the person that won it last time or you go for the form rider. And that's like a lot of our predictions. All too often, we home in on familiar crises we've dealt with before. So every housing association in the land is ready for the credit crunch. They have so much liquidity, you can barely move for it. We're okay for 2008, but are we all right for 2021? Dominic Cummings, remember him, he was very frustrated with politicians. They've been to university, they've been to debating societies and they are fantastic at saying what is right or clever in the present tense. They live for the quip, they live for the put down, they live for the flourish. I've worked with many people who've studied PPE at university. I was at Glasgow University, it was a big, big debating society, and I've got a little bit of insight into how these people think. A great example of which is that Boris Johnson can be quoted, if you go back into the annals, you can find quotes from him demonstrating that he is for the European Union and, as you know very well, against the European Union. Being right is the prize for these people. And it's almost like, it's almost like a problem, almost like a weakness. So I, for example, can always argue any case with equal ferocity. I look at what Nicola says about Scottish nationalism. I look what Boris says and I, you know, do they completely believe what they say? Do they think it's factual or are they relying entirely on faith and using that faith to fuel the arguments that they make. Perhaps the greatest politician in recent years was Obama. Came from a different tradition. You'd expect him to be a bit sharper on prediction as he was with most things and there's a great section in his recently published autobiography where there's a crisis uh, developing. He goes to bed and he says to the team around him, 
Well, wake me up when the locusts come or the plague comes. And they say, what do you mean, sir? And he says, I was joking. So even Obama, 10 years ago, whenever it was, the idea of a plague, the idea of a pandemic was far, far, far from his mind. Now, when you look at the books that Dominic Cummings recommended on super forecasting, they're great, provided you have data to begin with. So there's a, an analysis of the feelings of Carillion, and it says that what we should all have done is gone to a page at the back of the accounts where it showed that sales were up 14%, but the money owed to Carillion was up 70%. That should have rang some alarm bells about the fundamental viability of that company. Now, you read this week that the board members of Carillion might be subject to 15-year bans from anything to do with directorships in the commercial sector or the charity sector. You look at the CVs of those people and each and every one of them would have been fast-tracked onto the board of an Almo or a housing association we have to be very careful about the stable we are recruiting from. Are we getting folk on top of their game that are looking at things objectively or are we simply putting together a Hampstead or Clapham dinner party? Worth reflecting on. The predictive models based on data surrounding COVID may turn out to be the high point of super forecasting in science. But at the start of it, is it too harsh to say we were relying to some extent on guesswork? And one of the intriguing issues about the current crisis is that it does make you think about the purpose of stress testing. We didn't see this coming, so that, that's not great, that's a problem. But the better landlords have performed admirably, haven't they? The rent has kept coming in. The repairs have continued, subject to, to various uh, concerns about safety and safeguards there. But generally speaking, the better housing associations, the better almos, the better councils have kept going. They got it right in the midst of a crisis that they hadn't predicted. It's those behaviours we have to reflect on and make sure they are deployed again in the future. To some degree, that didn't come as a surprise to us at HQN. When we started out stress testing, we found it difficult. We struggled to get it right. A chap called Mike Verrier, who is a board member of a number of major associations and has led top international companies, took us to one side and said, mistake you're making is you're putting too much effort into predicting the crisis. In reality, what you've got to do is train people to behave appropriately and act in the right way when a crisis unfolds. And that is what has actually happened in the housing sector throughout COVID. Not everywhere, but the better organisations have got into it and coped very well indeed. Some of the weaker organisations, I think, have placed too much reliance on backward looking stress testing. They relied on house price increases and property sales to offset any crisis. This was particularly uh, a factor in London and the South East and intriguingly parts of the North West. Now we find ourselves in a situation where for various reasons the market in flats has halved. Despite the fact that most of those flats were built entirely legally. There's been such a loss of faith in that market that it really does mean big, big problems for many organisations that we're dealing with at the moment. Will anyone bail them out? Time will tell. It may be they have to be bailed out in order to get the flat market working, in order to make the whole housing market click as once it did. But that 
rock solid reliance on house prices may no longer be the pillar of business plans. So what are the big messages this week? Do look forward. Do use your data to predict. Accept the fact you won't always get it right and really learn from the current crisis. What worked for you, what worked for others and make sure those behaviours are on tap in the future. I've just been handed this magazine by my colleagues in HQM and I've realised there are numerous articles here that predict the future. Please scratch this entire video and simply read the wonderful magazine. Thanks for your attention and I'll see you next week.